2022 will be an important year for photography and awakening to all those who are into light painting. And this video won't be possible without my sponsor, Skillshare. Long ago, a big YouTube sensation made an important statement to the world of photography. And soon, this statement became a phenomenon, a household face for whoever interested in photography, and also upset the balance of this very industry. Valid or not, many believed him, to the point that the effect was a devalued photographic society. New photographers blindly chasing numbers printed on the spec sheet rather than perfecting his or her photographer's skills. Focus on bokeh instead of the context within the frame. Comparing high ISO numbers rather than reading the light correctly in the first place. And worshipping megapixel number so one can crop out the bits that he doesn't want rather than compose it correctly by using the correct focal length or moving closer to the subject. Well, I'm not here to debate or to do trash talk. I've said it many times already that I use whatever I need to capture the shot I want, whether through a telescope, using a drone, climbing a tree, or whatever. I use what's appropriate for my job that I'm doing. But as a photographer who values tools as a conduit to complete my vision, I want to have varieties, and I want to have options and choices. This is the reason I support the underdogs, the underrated options only to raise awareness so the photographers, new or old, know that there are other usable and capable alternatives out there, and critically, to satisfy different photographic needs. I may be an official OM system ambassador, but more importantly, I consider myself as an ambassador for photography. We all know that camera sales are plummeting every year, a shrinking market overall, at least to me, and each manufacturer is fighting not for profit, but for survival. I've talked about lengthening product cyclings, upgrading camera features and capabilities via firmwares, design and make better lenses, and critically, educate photographers. We'll bring a more sustainable future to the industry. And this is evident when you study Apple. And what happens when hardware sales is stagnant? Many market gain is not by gaining new customers, but to steal from others. The market is saturated, full stop. So, this is why Apple is focusing more on supporting services, like Apple Music and TV+. And I think it's time for the photographic industry to start thinking about a similar route. But more importantly, this will create a more sustainable future for our planet too. Computer chip shortage is going to continue to hinder the number of sales. Global fuel and material costs are rising faster than a rocket. We've seen camera and lens prices going up this year, and this is only going to get worse in the near future. But should we worry about it? Well, of course, as a human being, a living member of this planet Earth, but as a photographer, no. If you already have a camera and a few lenses, whatever happens around the world won't change your photography. The limit of photography or creativity is never about gear in the first place, but yourself. Before we further explain the future of photography, I would like to introduce my sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform where you can learn tons of high quality material so you can learn new skills or further your existing knowledge. Even as a professional myself, I need to keep up with the latest trends and upgrade my skills for tomorrow's projects. I recently got a few new inspiration from my good friend Dan Rubin's travel photography class. It's fun, relaxed, and well presented. And this is the same across all classes inside Skillshare. So if you want to learn something new in photography or even for your well-being, there's always a class in Skillshare. Because I'm so awesome, Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 subscriber a one-month free trial instead of the normal seven days by clicking the link in my video description below. So you can start exploring this huge library to your heart's content and boost your creative juice, all at the comfort on your sofa or during your commute to work. And anyway, it's time to have a chat about photography from this point on and beyond. 
any current cameras in 2022 has reached a point that features in these cameras are more than what 99.9% .9 of the photographers would ever need. For example, I look back at what I always do, how I take my pictures. Well, I, I haven't changed much over the past 15 years. And in these 15 years, I've used three completely different systems, Canon SLR, Leica rangefinders, and now OM system. But nothing has changed in the way I create or the way my brain works. Because the only thing in my head is always about creating visually interesting, impactful, and meaningful pictures. And the way I achieve this is by adjusting my exposure triangle and use lights and shadows to shape the pictures as I imagine in my head. Yeah, basically it. If you hear carefully to what I just said, and that is the basic of photography. I didn't mention any fancy things that we've raved about these days. No AI, no computer, no tracking, no nothing. Just pure hardcore basic photography. And some older photographers may remember the good old analog days when we didn't get any fancy computer stuff in photography. We didn't get new cameras every year. We only took pictures. We bought photo books. We hang out in galleries. We met up and chat about photos and arranged photo walks. We had nothing else to compare apart from our photography, our styles and our approach which is quite a big difference to what we know in modern digital photographic world. And we compare everything these days, whether it's ISO performance, resolution, continuous AF hit rates, frame rates, literally anything that has a number on it. And I rarely even hear anyone talk about photos these days. Really, what is going on? <laughs> Who is to blame? But don't get me wrong, digital photography is wonderful. Its relative low running costs is great for any learning photographers, especially negative developments and printings are exceptionally costly these days. And the ability to create digital artworks is much easier if you are very proficient with image editing softwares like Photoshop. So digital is good. Micro Four Thirds, APS-C, full frame or medium format all have a place in the photographic world all serve a purpose to do what's best for that format. No one should ever say that one is definitively better than other. No one is more professional and certainly no one platform or system takes better picture than others. All these are misconceptions fueled by social marketing, which brainwashes new photographers to get them to buy rather than to learn. And perhaps I'm too old school or maybe I'm just out of date expired in this ever-changing and fast-paced digital photography world. But no matter how out I am, I'm still looking at pictures that people post online. And in the end, I only put a thumb or like in the photos that I really enjoy. I don't even care about what they shot with. A good photo is a good photo, whether it's shot on a five pound disposable camera, an iPhone or a 30,000 pound camera. So this is my rant on today's photography world. And don't get me wrong, there are a lot of gentle souls, genuine photographers who really care about this craft than showing off their wallet. And I'm also not trying to convince one to use what I use or saying Michael Forther is the best. And like I said, I love photography and whatever you use is totally your preference. And I hope you also respect my choices too. Now, I hope from this point, we have a better photography community and let's enjoy each other's company because there are a lot more worrying stuff than the stars in the sky. And let's make this world one less thing to argue and turn whatever they are into smiles and positive energy. <laughs> and that's it for now. Let me know what your thoughts about what I just said and all have a good day. You know what to do now. Thumb if you like this video and sub if you want to stay in touch with all things photography and filmmaking. Peace.
いい写真を撮るための最初の条件これはカメラを持っていることだと彼が一番思考していたのは多くの人にいかに写真を撮ってもらうか1960年代前谷さんというあのオリンパスの技術者がいましてねカメラが当時はまだ高級品なので前谷さんをはじめとする開発の方々が多くの人に使ってもらうにはどうしたらいいかって考えた中でカメラ自体をもっと安く作りたい当時6000円で作れないかっていうふうにできたカメラですそして当時高かったフィルム代現像代をその少しでも負担を減らしたいそうしたらハーフサイズのカメラを作ろうそうすると倍取れるのですごく経済的です35ミリカメラの24枚だと48枚取れますそれがあの非常に画期的だということで、えー、使われたペンが出た時にオリンパスを持って家族写真を撮ったりなんかする人が非常にいましたんですね主にプロを中心として使う機材が変わってきていたそのなるべくいいものを作ろうと各社していてどうしても大きくなってしまっているその中でマイタにはやっぱりプロが本当に求めるものってそういうことなのかっていうことに疑問を感じてその中で生まれたのが OM1 だと考えています結局彼がこれ集大成なんですねやっぱりかなり命が引き込まれたカメラではないかなっていうふうに僕は思いますはい。The more the photographic opportunities present themselves to me, the camera it becomes a productive tool. It's there for a purpose. Maitani realized that, and that drove the original design of the OM. When you put it in your hand, everything was where you wanted it to be. Aperture is right here. My two front fingers take care of that. Other fingers fall back to the shutter speed. It's an enabler. It's a conduit, not an interference between you and what's happening. 1996年にオリンパスは最初の民生品のデジタルカメラを出したわけですけれどもフィルムであろうとデジタルであろうとないものを作るというのは全社共通で今でも一番ベーシックなところに流れているのではないかなと考えますデザインを検討するときにスケッチを書いて最初検討してこの次にですね 3D データを入れてからこのようなラフな削りのモデルを作りますでこれをベースにボタンの位置が適切であるかとかあるいはクリップ性能はこれでいいかとかっていうのを、えー、検討していくんですけれども我々が一番に考えていることはやはり使われる方ユーザーのことです。Size and portability and mobility in photography is a message that we've been talking about for decades. The philosophy of the Olympus cameras is, is being able to shoot everywhere. We had a photographer go to Antarctica, and obviously, you've got crazy low temperatures there. We created technology that enables them to do that. If you were that customer, what would the end solution be that you would want? It's important to always be thinking about. What do people need? What are they going to need? What's the future going to be? And to aspire to deliver that. The world is a very important thing. 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 その当時の家族の思い出がやはりそこに残っているってみんなが思うので思い出を取り戻したいという気持ちがあると思うんですつまり写真にはそれだけの力があると思っていますやっ
I've got a photograph of our son. I think he was a year old. It's got the catch light in his eyes. Wonderful moment of him getting ready to tap the glass. It's not a great photograph, but it's a great moment. Wow, look at that. I remember that. Oh, look at this. You know, raising your kids, the pains and the struggle and the exhaustion and the joys and all these things that occur. What a wonderful confirmation it is of you as a human. This is who we are and who we were. というのはすごく大事にしています。マイタリが残した言葉の一つに我々はカメラを開発提供しているんではなくてカメラを通じて人々が幸せになることを提供しているんだっていう言葉があります。ないから作る。その精神というのを日々実現しようと。これこそが社